I'm just suggesting, it's a very, I, I have several friends who are pretty sophisticated whose children have very, very rare diseases. They found the right doctor somewhere on the planet because they went through all the various libraries that are online. It's a totally different way of thinking about what you're doing. Now, and also, by the way, the, the molecular, the, the age of molecular medicine is going to be as different from what we do as what we do is from the 18th century use of leeches. I mean, you're, you, you are not going to recognize medicine 30 years from now. It's going to be that big a change. Now, notice also the DNA revolution in agriculture. Huge breakthroughs in productivity and how long you can keep things and how you design things. Consider the next phase of the information revolution. Rising power, declining cost, worldwide networks, and real-time information. Nobody yet, and this has been, it's been fascinating to me, and be, people like George Gilder come close, and Alvin and Heidi Toffler come close, but nobody's yet quite been able to, to figure out how to describe the scale of this revolution and how it will change us. This is going to literally bring to you, remember what Gilder said, you're going to carry a cellular telephone which is also your computer. It may also be your portable television. It may also be your Walkman. It may also be your checkbook. I mean, you'll have all sorts of conveniences, many of which did not exist 25, 30 years ago, in one handheld device. And you'll be able to, you know, you'll access all your friends' telephone numbers, and you can also then call them. And in that kind of setting, if any of you noticed that there's, there's, there's one, I can't remember now which of the computer companies has a, com a commercial on now, where the person is sitting at their computer console watching the television and talking on the phone while typing simultaneously, and she changes the, the, the price on the menu because she gets a good review on the local TV, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a great example. Well, that's the beginning. And it's going to be available to everybody. And we don't have a clue yet how that world's going to work. But let me give you some examples. Because it will change your life as profoundly as the automobile liberated North Georgia. Remember, back when you had to use a horse and buggy, the reason county seats aren't very far away is it took you all day to get there. Now, in the length of time it took your great-grandparents to ride on a buggy to the county seat, you can drive across three states. Or you can fly across the whole country. Well, this is about to happen to information in a big way. Some examples. Self-learning and distance learning. Nobody's really thought through yet. We can liberate the smallest, most rural school in America. We can liberate the poorest child. We can liberate the busiest person. I mean, people say, you know, welfare mothers have to stay home and take care of the kids. Fine. Then let's build a learning module so while the kids are asleep at 3 in the afternoon, the mother's learning. But let's set standards of behavior. Let's do something. But let's not say to people, why don't, you, why don't you waste 20 years of your life? Why don't you sit around and do nothing all day? Soap operas are fine. I mean, why, why do we have so many people who watch soap operas? Partly because we've set a cultural standard that says killing time's fine. You're probably bored. Why don't you watch a soap opera? If instead we said, why don't you take at least three hours a day to learn? If we're going to pay you full time to do nothing, I feel the same way about unemployment compensation. If you can't find a job and we're going to give you money so you're being paid not to not do anything, then why don't you learn something 40 hours a week? And why don't we make it freestanding and easy so it is self-learning? And if you want to interface with somebody, why don't you just pick up your phone, turn on your TV, turn to you know, cable channel 65, dial them up, and you talk to them direct then, and so you, get, you, don't have to, you, know, you don't have to schedule, when do I drive to the campus to see the advisor? None of this stuff's very far away, and some of it's actually happening all across the country in pilot projects. But it requires rethinking institutionally how we function, and rethinking how we score things and how we measure things. It means you don't measure how many people are at average daily, att annual, uh, average daily attendance, which is how schools get money. You measure how much did your students learn this year. I mean, right now, if you have a big average daily attendance, even if nobody in the room learned a thing, you get the cash. And that's got to be about as dumb a way to measure as you can get. And if you taught all of them calculus in three weeks, think how much money you'd lose. I mean, what's the incentive plan for the school? Keep them. Don't let them get out. You'll lose the money. final exams. Mm-hmm. Because they made the money. <laughs> think about it. I mean, think what the incentive systems work. And what we ought to be doing is saying to people, you want to go to Panama City, Florida, and relax for five days, but you're, good, but you're willing to, to guarantee you'll pass your chemistry exam? Here's the material. 
Now, you don't pass the chemistry exam, you're in big trouble. But it's a totally different way of working. And it also means you're 40 years old, you never did chemistry, you decided now you need to know chemistry. Here's the material. And that, if you only study it on Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings, fine, we don't care. I mean, I, I, was, I was looking at some of, of Dr. Minnick's lectures, which I thought were marvelous on, on uh, World War II. I learned a bunch of stuff last night just looking. You know, we're at the point now where we can produce materials that is freestanding, sitting there. You pick it up. You don't have to drive 55 miles to be at point A at 10.05 for 55 minutes. We could mail it to you, or FedEx it, or UPS, or whatever. It's a different way of thinking. And then test, did you learn it or not? Which is a different question than did you sit through it. Similarly, self-health and distance medical care. Why shouldn't you be able to diagnose a lot of things? Why shouldn't you be able to simply, if you're in a rural area and you need the best doctor in the country, you know, the Army's now working on this. They have, they have a system which they call jumping echelons, where they, the field hospital with the person with the unique injury skips every hospital in between and goes back to Walter Reed or goes to the best brain surgeon in America, and they in real time look at the materials <laughs> electronically. And the field hospital is getting the best advice from the right specialist to save the life of this young person. Why can't that be true everywhere in America? Now, it's a totally different model. It's a totally different way of thinking about things. 